I always just thought like, if I could be the person that my coaches were to me, to one person, like my life will have had meaning and I will have made a difference. And I think in coaching, there's always moments and there's times where you kind of look at yourself and you're like, what are we doing? This is madness. Um, (laughs) But those those come a lot less frequently than all the times where you're like, this is literally my job. Like my job today included me coming in and like hanging out and like watching some girls do some incredible athletic things. And then, you know, like I get to talk to you about the sport. I mean, come on, like this is, Mm -hmm. it's a pretty good gig. I just feel very, very fortunate that this sport exists in my world and that it's brought the people it has. I mean, I think I have one friend in my life that I can say that was not brought to me through swimming. And pretty much every other person that is important to me in my world is somehow connected to swimming, which is a little bit scary and also amazing. Welcome to another episode of the Get Out Swim podcast. I'm your host, Seamus T. Quinn, and today I'm joined by head coach of Princeton Women's Swimming and Diving. Uh, this is Abby Bredauer. So, Abby, thanks for thanks for hopping on. Of course, glad to be here. I'm stoked to be doing this with you, uh, Vanessa Williamson. I interviewed her back maybe a couple months ago now, and uh, she was um, mentioning you as as a coach that I should definitely reach out to. Um, I know you had some connections with the NESCAC um, back in in the Hamilton days, and then also uh, more recently at Tufts. So. Uh, Yeah, super stoked to talk to you. Um, And I want to start off by just kind of uh, seeing where you're at with uh, with the season. I I was looking at some of the meet results of uh, the Princeton women so far on both the swimming and diving side. And and you guys seem to be doing really well. Um, It looks like you have an undefeated record and, you know, a plethora of amazing swims across the board. Actually, I, I was doing some research and I found that out of the entire Ivy League, Right now, you have uh, the top times in eight individual events um, for many of the swimmers, and then all five relays hold the top time right now. And and I just found that to be like really, uh, really cool. And so, yeah, I just wanted to see where you're at in your season, um, you know, what kind of meets you guys have coming up and, and just how you would assess everything so far. Yeah, well, that is a fun stat. I didn't know that. Um, I did know we were, had the top relay times because that's been a goal of ours. But um, yeah, I feel like we're we're in a good place. Um, you know, getting the job in August and jumping right into it, didn't quite know what to expect, but have been fortunate enough to watch the women for the last two years. And so um, didn't have to learn quite as much as I would have if it was totally new. Um, but yeah, we feel good. We opened up with some Ivy League competition for a semester and and were able to come away with some wins there and then had a good showing at our uh, mid-season meet, which is the Big Al Invitational, which we host, um, and just started back up with 2024 competition um, against Navy and Notre Dame. And I was really proud of the way the girls performed um, top to bottom. I feel like we're, we're in a pretty good place, um, which is fun. We have a really talented first-year class, and I think that's allowed um, some of our other swimmers to, to dream a little bigger, which has been fun. I think when you see some of the stuff that these girls are doing in practice every day, um, it really like opens up your eyes to what, what is possible. And I feel like that's been, been hugely helpful. And obviously like from a very selfish perspective, starting um, in a new job, like you, you hope that you have your senior class on board and um, they've been great. They've been great leaders. They, they got on board with me and they've really helped me as I settle into this role. And I just, I, I give them a ton of credit. Um, I always feel like greatness can't exist without the space for it to exist. Um, and our seniors have done a great job creating that space for our whole team. Um, so yeah, I feel, I feel good. We had, uh, we have a tough weekend this weekend and we host Columbia at home on Friday morning at 10 AM. And then we hop on a bus and drive down to Virginia tech and swim Virginia tech and Penn state the next day. So that'll be, um, mm. a good learning experience. And, and really, I, I think it'll be really good prep for the end of the year and IVs and ECACs, our championship meets and kind of that back to back and travel and, you know, not everything going exactly as you want it. It's not like we're hosting at home and you just get to go back to your room and, eat the food that you know. So, um, yeah, so that's, that's where we are feeling good. Very cool. Yeah. A couple questions off the top of my head, but I want to start with, did, so right now you're sort of in this again, winter, um, sort of training period. And, and so Mm -hmm. it's right now, are your women, um, not in, in any sort of classes Has has school started for Princeton up at this point or no? No. So we have a great schedule. Um, I've had the team back on campus since December 30th and we don't start class for another two weeks. Um, Mm -hmm. so we don't take our training trip in the, in the winter, our divers go to Puerto Rico, but the swimmers are here. And, um, 
yeah, we just get, we have a beautiful pool and we get it to ourselves and it's great. So we've gotten some really good training in just being on campus and um, the girls have been doing some yoga. They did a spin class today. Um, you know, obviously we flew out to South Bend. So there's like little things, but mostly it's just here in training and um, getting, you know, the full, the full experience of professional swimming with no classes, which at Princeton is, is a big difference. Um, there's a lot less stress when they're not in class. So feel good about that, which is fun. And then kind of start, start class and then have our dual meet with Harvard and Yale, which is a pretty big one. And then a couple more weeks before we head into championships. Nice. Yeah. Very cool. So, so no training trip, you got the the beautiful pool at Princeton and, and certainly, um, yeah, take advantage of that when, when there's no classes. So, uh, that seems pretty cool. Um, and, and what is like a training block look like for your Princeton women during this period? Like it, it could be a rough kind of sketch of what you guys are doing. Um, and, and what, you know, you have maybe some assistant coaches doing on the side to help you, um, manage it all. But yeah, what, what does that kind of look like for your women? Yeah, there's a lot of things that are going on right now. Um, we're, I get, again, we have a, we have a beautiful pool. We're able to go long course. We're able to go short course. Um, you know, we, we have anywhere between nine and 20 lanes, depending on what we're doing. So, um, there's a lot of space so we can get pretty individualized. Um, so this morning, I think we had seven different sets going on. Um, so there was like a super sprint set, a sprint set, uh, like what we call like a long sprint set. So then there was like a 200 set of 400 or 500 set, a mile set, and then a kick set. Cause we have a couple girls with ear infections right now. So, um, a lot going on and we get pretty specific on it. Like sometimes I, I think I overcomplicate things. Um, and, and part of that's because I have the ability to, I've got, um, two assistant coaches and they're great and can run things and write things. And, um, you know, I, I feel like we just take advantage of that because we can, um, and yeah, try and mix in a little bit of everything this week. We have, um, we had a double yesterday and a lift today. We have a single with a spin class tomorrow. We double again with a lift. And then Thursday we have a single and a yoga class to kind of get us ready heading into the meet weekend. Um, yeah. So it kind of depends. You could ask any girl on the team and they'd all do be doing something a little bit different week to week. Mm. Yeah, no, that's awesome. I mean, being able to kind of, yeah, have different looks for different swimmers. Um, and, and certainly with the help of some of your assistant coaches, I think that's, uh, that's tremendous. And certainly your, your swimmers are probably benefiting greatly from that. Um, so that's very cool. Um, and, and going back a little bit, so you assumed the role of head coach in the summer. Um, and, and, and originally you were on Princeton, on the Princeton staff since 2021, but you were an assistant on the men's program. Is that correct? Yeah. Okay. So, so what was that like? What was like that transition like from, you know, being at Princeton for two years, having the familiarity of the Ivy League and being on staff at Princeton, but being on the men's side and then assuming the role of being the head coach on the women's side? Like, what was that process like for you personally? Yeah, I think I think I was pretty lucky in that I um, like I I knew Princeton and I'd been a head coach before. So while this role is new, I, I kind of understood the institution and the quirks and the things that make it special. Um, and I understood what comes with being a head coach. Um, so it was, it was easy. I don't want to say it was easy. It was much easier than my first transition to being a head coach. Um, and I think part of that, like I had a relationship with most of the women over the last two years. Um, obviously Matt and I get along great. Matt's the, the men's head coach. And I, I love like working with him. Um, I liked working for him. You know, I, I think, I think I got really lucky in that. So yeah, it, it's been, it's been about as smooth as I could have hoped for. Um, you know, and, and I, again, like the, the senior class has been instrumental in making that happen. Like they, they, it's a big change. Like when your coach leaves senior year, it's a big change and they, they handle it with grace and humility and just like they were very adaptable and willing to be open to a very different personality and type of training. And, um, you know, we all have our moments, I think, where we look around and we're like, man, I kind of miss, you know, like there's been a couple of times where I've like looked over at the men's side of the pool and I'm like, I kind of miss when I'm, I'm not in charge and I get to just like be the fun, cool coach. Um, mm -hmm. but for the most part, like this has been, it's a dream. Like I get to stay at a school that I love and I get to stay around people that I love and, um, you know, every day I get to know the women better and that feels that that probably is the best thing is like getting to build those relationships on a much deeper level with them. Um, so yeah, it's been, it's been good. I feel very lucky. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. Um, like you said, you know, you've had the head coaching experience before, uh, you're familiar with, uh, kind of, yeah, the ins and outs of, 
of the school and the position like being a head coach. So that does make it uh, a little bit more familiar and I guess easy. So um, that's, that's great. And another question that I had that just came to mind was uh, we talked a little bit off air, but you know, you've been both in the NESCAC and the Ivy league um, throughout your career. I mean, you, you, you started in the Ivy league back. Um, I think it was in maybe the late two thousands with Columbia or the early to late 2000s with uh, being an assistant at Columbia. And then, you know, you bounced around the NESCAC a little bit. And there are definitely parallels with like the NESCAC and the Ivy, I feel like. Um, so I guess in your experience, what makes, um, I don't know, what, what's special about just coaching in the Ivy League and, and, and at, at a school like Princeton? Like, what are some things when you kind of take it all in at the end of the day, you're like, oh, this, this is pretty cool. Like, I like maybe the rivalries that we have or just the way the conference is built. Um, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think I, I like high level academics. I like high level athletics. Um, and I feel like I've kind of sought those out in, in my coaching career. Um, what like Princeton, you know, has been on my radar since I was a recruit, my sister swam in the league. So I followed results while she was in the league. Um, yeah, like the rivalries are great. Um, I really like having separate men's and women's programs. I think there's so few spaces that, men get to be in a, a space with no women and women get to be in a space with no men. I like when women are the highlight, like going to the NESCAC meet as, as a, uh, as a female going to the women's meet, like that was always a huge highlight, just seeing all those women supporting each other. Um, and, and it feels very similar in the Ivy league. Um, there's definitely like just a mutual respect because, you know, even, even though you want to beat the person in the lane next to you, you know, that they're also like grinding it out every day, you know, swimming wise academically, um, and having this really unique experience. And I think one of the things that's really special about Princeton is that it's it's got a it's got a huge history and tradition. Um, and our alumni base is is amazing. I, I can't even like I can't even put into words how great our alumni base is. Um, we have reunions every year and we have, you know, last summer I think we had 250 people back for our alumni swim meet. And that that happens every summer. Um, and so getting to watch the connections between our current athletes and former athletes. Um, and th their shared experience, like I, I, that for, for me is probably one of the most special things about Princeton. And it's really just like an indescribable experience. Um, you have to witness it to, to see it. And even then, like, I still feel like an outsider looking in on it because, you know, I didn't go to school here, but, um, yeah, I don't know. I just feel like, I, I feel like every team is special and every team has great qualities and things that make it, you know, the best team. Like I, I could say that about every team that I've been on. Like, I just, I, I feel like you can, you can find that. And I feel very lucky that throughout my career, like as a swimmer and as a coach, I've been able to find amazing places and be surrounded by amazing people that do amazing things. Like, you know, that's why swimming is the best sport and diving. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Um, well, cool. Very cool. And uh, yeah, so I want to know more about like your background in, in the sport of swimming and even in coaching. So why don't you tell me um, just about your background and how you got involved in the sport of swimming? Uh, maybe, you know, the origin story of, of Abby here and and then, yeah, how you got into coaching. Um, like, you know, what what was the, the vision kind of for you? It was coaching always on the radar. Or did it come in late? Yeah. Just talk to me about that whole the whole journey. Okay, this journey is long because I'm old, <laughs> so be prepared. Um, <laughs> no, I <laughs> I started swimming. I, my parents moved when I was six months old from Ohio to New Hampshire, which is where I grew up. Um, and they didn't have any friends, and they didn't know what to do with me because I was, you know, six months old. And my dad was starting a new medical practice, and so my mom signed me up for, you know, mommy and me swimming lessons at the Y. And it was just like I, I was done. Like I joined a summer club team when I was four. I taught myself how to swim butterfly when I was five, and like. This, this is just it. Like I, swimming was it for me and I played soccer and I skied and I ran track. I did a bunch of stuff, but, um, you know, the further, the further along I got, the more I just like swimming was it. And I was very fortunate to be able to swim at Kenyon and, um, spend four years there. And during my time there, um, you know, just like, I, I think for me going through the experience of being a collegiate athlete, um, and like, you know, the experiences that you have and, um, we, we, we had some tough stuff and we had some really fun stuff while I was there, but my coaches were kind of the constant and it was in the days before cell phones were a thing. And, you know, I wasn't FaceTiming my parents. So my coaches really took that role to me. Um, and I've kind of known all along that I didn't want my own children. Um, and so I, I also wanted to, like, I also knew that I wanted to make an impact in the world. And, um, I always just thought like, if I could be the person that my coaches were to me to one person like my life will have had meaning and i will have made a difference um 
so yeah, kind of after my sophomore year in uh, Kenya, and I, I decided that coaching is what I wanted to do and um, was very lucky to get a job right out of college in coaching and um, then took a year off, was a ski bum for a year, which I highly recommend, but, um, <laughs> you know, came back and started up at Columbia and haven't really looked back since then. And I think in coaching, there's always moments and there's times where you kind of look at yourself and you're like, what are we doing? This is madness. Um, <laughs> but those those come a lot less frequently than all the times where you're like, this is literally my job. Like my job today included me coming in and like hanging out and like watching some girls do some incredible athletic things. And then, you know, like I get to talk to you about the sport. I mean, come on, like this is, mm -hmm. it's a pretty good gig. Um, and after this, I'm going to head home and take my dog for a walk in the snow and she'll be happy and I'll be home before five. And, you know, like I'm not home before five most days, but today I will be and um, kind of just really try to appreciate those things. And and I, yeah, I don't know. I just feel very, very fortunate that this sport exists in my world and that it's brought the people it has. I mean, I think I have one friend in my life that I can say that was not brought to me through swimming. And pretty much every other person that is important to me in my world is somehow connected to swimming, which is a little bit scary and also amazing. Yeah, yeah, no, I agree. Yeah, 100%. Um, it, it is the relationships built and swimming across the board are amazing, um, truly amazing. And so- who were some of those mentors for you when it came to coaching? I think you mentioned a few here, but um, you know, who, who were people that you looked up to um, just, just throughout this coaching journey? And it couldn't continue now, like people that you, you know, just really like um, the, the, the way that they coach and that you, it, you molded maybe some of your own coaching after, after what you saw, you know, or, or what you observed. Yeah. I mean, I, I have like a million, I, I like, it's, it's so hard to be really specific, obviously swimming at Kenyon, the coaches that I had during my time, um, Jim Steen was there during my time, Amy Heasley Williams, um, probably like without realizing it probably had the biggest impact on me deciding to be a coach. Um, and yeah, she, she was incredible. Um, Peter Casares was my coach while I was at Kenyon and is one of my best friends to this day. Um, so I think those like early days and then, you know, I worked with great people early on in my career, Diana Kasky, um, who I worked with for six years at Columbia. She's still there. We swim them on Friday and like, it's just been fun because I, you know, I've watched her kids grow up and I have stayed in touch and, um, you know, now her, her oldest just graduated college. Her youngest is a freshman in college. And, um, you know, I was there when her youngest was born, like she was born on our first mm -hmm. recruit weekend <laughs> that, that we hosted. And, um, you know, so that's like, it's like those little memories just like are fun. And then, yeah, I feel like in, in the division three world, I've just been so fortunate to create amazing, amazing connections. Um, and you know, whether it's former swimmers that have gone into coaching, um, Hannah Hagee at Trinity college in, um, Connecticut is one of them who swam for me and now coaches, um, Brad Dunn at Lynchburg is another, um, you know, like, so there are people that I kind of like had as swimmers and now I get to interact with them as peers and friends. Um, obviously, mm -hmm. you know, like, Adam at Tufts and Brad at Bowdoin. Like there's the NESCAC is filled with great people. Um, obviously I still have a soft spot in my heart for Kenyon and both Jess and Danny. Um, Jess I swam with for three years and Danny has been a friend since I hosted her on her recruiting trip. So um, yeah, I just, I feel really lucky the people that swimming has brought into my life um, and things that I've learned from them. Um, one of the reasons that I came to Princeton was because of Matt Crispino. Um, he's just one of the best humans that you will ever meet. And, um, you know, I was like, if I'm gonna, if I'm gonna surround myself with good people, like there's no one better than Matt. And so to work with him for two years was great. And now, you know, I, like nothing has really changed. Like I spend just as much time sitting in his office asking him questions as I did last year, I think, <laughs> um, you know, so that's fun. And then I think, when you get to be a head coach, you know, you got to like, hopefully mentor some of the, the younger coaches and, and be a part of that. So um, my assistant Juan Sequeira is great. He's been with the program as a volunteer for the last two years and has moved into that. We have a first year coach, Alex Stevens, um, you know, who just graduated and she's finding her way in coaching. I'm part of a women's summit. So I have those women. Um, they're incredible. Like I just, I, I really am very fortunate. And, um, mm -hmm. you know, I, I feel like, the same way it takes a village to, to raise a child. I feel like it takes a village to keep a, a coach and coaching. Um, and I have the best village. So it's, it's mm. the reason why I'm still in this um, is because I have incredible support. So on the days that I am not having my best day, I have a lot of people that can help bring me back and remind me why I'm good at this and why this is what's right for me. Yeah. 
Yeah, no, that's great. Yeah, totally uh, agree with you that, yeah, it takes uh, more than just one person to, to you know, hold down the fort. And, and that's, a, yeah, it's a really true, true statement when it comes to um, collegiate swimming and diving programs and swimming and diving programs across the board, but um, certainly at the college level. So that's awesome. Well, well, talk to me about your maybe first experiences, like transitioning out of being a college swimmer and a successful college swimmer at that at Kenyon. Um, and then, you know, now realizing, okay, I need to step into this coaching role. Um, you did mention you took a, a ski bum year, which I think is great. I'm, I'm <laughs> kind of taking my own uh, bum year in a way here. Cause yeah, it, it can be a lot for sure early on. So, yeah. um, yeah, just, uh, yeah, maybe talk to me about just your first experiences, college coaching at, at sort of Hamilton and, and then, uh, Columbia, maybe what lessons did you learn or things that you kind of had to like talk yourself through or reflect mm -hmm. on as you were kind of early in the process. Yeah. I mean, my first year at Hamilton was a super interesting year. Um, so the head coach had gotten the athletic director position. So that was Dave Thompson and he'd been there for forever. Um, so they'd hired a new head coach, TJ Davis, um, who'd come from Alfred state. And so I had like two head coaches to learn from. And one of them was also the AD. So I got like, I, I got such, such immense knowledge from the two of them, um, you know, both on the swimming front, but then also from Dave on the athletic director front and just kind of seeing how things worked. I think when you're a swimmer, things just happen and you don't realize kind of how they happen. Um, so I remember like going to our first meet and TJ was like, you need to order lunches. And I was like, what do you mean I need to order lunches? And he's like, well, <laughs> we need to feed the kids. And I like had never, as a swimmer, I just was so selfish and I had never thought, you know, I thought about all the swimming stuff. And I spent time mm -hmm. in the office with my coaches and I broke down video and I did all the tempos and stroke counts and race things and relays and times. Like I did all of that, but I never thought about like that whole piece that exists, like getting buses, doing travel, all of that. Um, and I was like, oh yeah, I guess like someone had to order those lunches for me. I, they were just always on the bus. Like there was just always a lunch for me and I never thought about it. Um, so yeah, I feel like, I feel like I learned a lot. Um, the kids at Hamilton were awesome. Like it was such a fun team. They were, they were so talented. Um, and like in and out of the pool, like we had musicians and poets and just people that had these extreme other talents. That was so cool from a coaching perspective to get to, to witness. Um, so yeah, I feel like that really just set me up. Um, the reason I took the ski bum year was because I'd had a GA position at Alabama um, with Arthur Albiero was their assistant coach who had been one of my assistants during my time at Kenyon. Um, and they moved away from that coaching staff. And I was like, eh, I don't know if I want to move to Alabama without knowing mm -hmm. anyone there. Um, so I took it, I took a year off and went out and had a great time living in Park City, Utah and doing some skiing and, you know, making minimum wage and just skiing every day. It was great. Um, and at that time, my sister was swimming, um, in, in the Ivy league and Columbia had a job opening and she was like, you got to go there. Like they should be so much better than they are. I don't get it. Like they, they, they're like the nicest kids and they're great. And so I interviewed with Diana and, um, it was funny. I interviewed with her like the day after Ivy's, which I don't even know how she was functioning. Um, and <laughs> yeah, I, I was like wearing a Harvard sweatshirt because I literally just flown home from Utah to watch my sister swim and didn't bring anything with me. So I was in like jeans and a Harvard hoodie. Cause that's all I had. And I was like, hi, hire me. Um, and she did, and I was there for six years and it was incredible. Like she gave me so much responsibility and let me do everything, you know, over the six years, like I got to write workouts, I got to lead practices, I got to write lineups, I got to experience like, you know, the fundraising side and all the other stuff that you don't really get right away. Um, mm. you know, she set me up and, um, I am eternally grateful for that because then when the Mary Washington job opened, like. I, I was prepared because she had spent a lot of time giving me that opportunity. Um, and staying somewhere for six years as an assistant, like that's, that's very rare. It was my second job and I stayed, I stayed for a long time and I got incredible relationships with the girls on that team and got to know, you know, Jim Bolster and Gustavo, uh, who's they're still there, uh, the men's staff really well and learn a lot from them. And, um, yeah, I, I just feel like Di really, like really, was great for me because she let me learn and she let me fail and she gave me opportunities to do stuff. Um, and I try very hard to do that with my assistants and give them opportunities to learn and, you know, and prepare them so that they can move on and hopefully continue in this sport. Um, so yeah, I feel like early on I got, I got very lucky in the, in the two first jobs that I had, um, you know, and, and mm -hmm. part of, part of both, both of those are, are conferences, you know, the NESCAC and the Ivy league, um, like, there, there, there's great coaches who, who want to help you along the way. So I feel like I got to really form those connections early on. Um, 
you know, Mike Schner at Penn is still in the, in the league. And so it's fun to like, you know, 10 years, 11 years later, be back and like being and sitting in head coaches meetings with him. Like who would have thought, you know, in 2004 yeah. that this would be the the way that it ended up. Yeah. Yeah, no, for sure. One, my, one name I just thought of was Katie Miley there the year, any of the years that you were a swimmer or, or I mean, when you were a coach. Yeah. There or, you know. Yeah. So I recruited her and then had her her first year. Um, so she was there. I had her for one year before I moved on and she was great. You know, it's, it's funny. I I often talk about like starting the recruiting process with her. And, you know, I think when we started the recruiting process with her, she was maybe a one Oh six yards under breaststroker, um, you know, and then ended up going one Oh five long course and one one Oh (laughs) five. Yeah. I think one Oh five long course and getting the, the, the bronze medal and being on a, on a morning relay for this United States. And, um, but I just, I very clearly, there's like a little office outside the pool at Columbia. It's like the diving coach. And then there's just like a little seating. And I remember, I remember sitting in there with her parents. Um, and they were, they were just like, Katie is very competitive. Like she <laughs> hates to lose. And it was kind of like the, every level that she got to, she figured out a way to win. So while she wasn't at like a super high level, when we started recruiting her, she got much faster over the year we recruited her. Um, it was like hearing that I was like, oh, this girl, this girl's going to be good. And I will say that in six years of recruiting at Columbia, she was the one person that we got away from Harvard, Yale and Princeton. Um, for most people, if they were looking at one of those schools, we were just like, "Mm," like they're going to, they're going to end up at one of those schools. Um, but yeah, Katie was, Katie was great. And obviously the, the hating to lose is, is very true. Like she, she turned that into a really great successful career as an athlete and, and now as a lawyer, which is cool. Yeah. No, very cool. Um, yeah, she came up in one of my previous podcasts with uh, Jack Levitt over at Georgetown because he yeah. was able to coach her while she was yeah. attending Georgetown Law. So just made me think of her name again. Um, but very cool. And well, talk to me about um, just like your experience going through the recruiting process, like that initial because like I just, you know, in my GA position at Wesleyan, I got that first full experience of the recruiting side of college coaching and everything that goes into that. And And I remember just at first just being like, Oh my God, this is, this is like a separate job in and of itself. Like this is such a, um, you know, an undertaking, especially if you want to do well at it and it's competitive and yeah. you know, you have to put on sort of your best show, your best face and all of that. So it, it, it's a big like energy drainer. Um, and, and not in a bad way. It's just, that's, that's how you want to, you know, take, you know, a, a swimmer that might be going to Harbor Yale away from them and bring them over to Princeton or Columbia or wherever you are. So, yeah, talk to me about your initial experiences just recruiting and, and if you took to it well or kind of what you learned along the way. Yeah, I mean, I feel like recruiting, while there are many similarities um, school to school, I feel like you really have to find the kids that are going to be successful in your specific environment. Um, and so I think, I think for me, like one of the things that I learned as a swimmer was that relationships were incredibly important to me. Um, you know, I... I, I just feel like I was incredibly lucky to have coaches that let me be myself and let me grow and learn and gave me that space um, and teammates who supported me in that. And that's kind of like how I approach the recruiting process is I just want to be a helpful resource and I want to give them the information about the school that, you know, I'm working at, whether that's, you know, Mary Washington or Tufts or Princeton. Um, and they're all different and they all have you know, huge selling points and they all have challenges and they all have, you know, kids there, there's going to be kids that like whatever school you're at, it's not the right school for them. And I always talk a lot about, you know, finding the school that's going to be the best place for you and, um, trying to be understanding that that might not be the school that I work at. And, and, you know, I haven't worked at Kenyon. Um, so I haven't had the opportunity of coaching at my alma mater. And so I understand, like, I know that, there are schools for everyone. And like, I didn't go to any of these schools. And so when people say no, you know, you, you support them in that. Um, I think, you know, early on in coaching, when I first started, like we didn't, it was like early days of emails. And so there was a lot of cold calling and a lot of binders full of paper forms that kids had sent in. And, you know, I remember like early days at Columbia, like sitting, I, I worked the Bates swim camps and like sitting in the basement of the dorm, like on my little bed next to the window, just like, slipping through pages and calling kids and being like, Hey, you filled out this interest form. And, you know, now it's a little bit easier in some ways because the connection is easier to get, but that also makes it harder because it's all the time. Like you're emailing, you're texting, you're calling. Um, But yeah, I think for me, it's just, it's relationships. It's, it's forming those relationships. And I think like 
one of the things that I get really excited about is getting to know the kids. And even if they don't end up where I am, I love following their results. I love seeing how it ends up. Um, you know, I, I, I always say like the goal in the recruiting process is, is that when you see them in, you know, five years, when they graduate from college, you run into them and you run into them randomly on the street or in an airport where you run into them at a reunion. But regardless, they just are like, that was the best experience of my life. Um, and I, that's all I really want for the kids. And I think Princeton has, you know, incredible offerings. I think Tufts had incredible offerings, still does, you know, like, and, and so um, I, I feel like it's just like, you just want kids to be happy and, and find a place that, that gives them what they want in the, in the process. Um, this year at Princeton, I, I honestly was very, very lucky, even though I started late, like we um, are currently recruiting the high school class of 2025. And um, it's a very talented class. It's also a very talented academic class. Um, mm. And we had interest from like, just like young women that I was just like, Oh, wow. You're all like really impressive. Like you're, you're very good academically. You're very good swimming diving wise, but also you're just like really fun people to talk to. Um, and our classes coming together really nicely. Um, it's a really long process, but I, I feel very confident with where we are. Um, like again, not only are they great student athletes, but they're also just really fun kids to talk to. Mm -hmm. Um, and I know that when they get here, the energy that they bring to the team is going to be, is going to be next level. And, um, you know, so it's, it's good. And I just, I, I just, I don't know. I think it's, I think it's really easy to get bogged down in like the competitive nature of recruiting. And, um, I try not to do that because ultimately you just want the kids to be happy. And, um, you know, if we lose a kid, I remind myself of that and, you know, um, yeah, I, I don't know. Yeah. I, I, yeah. I maybe approach it a little bit differently than some people. No, but I mean, that that's good. Like just kind of, uh, yeah, appreciating being able to just like create relationships with these, you know, prospects and then maybe eventual swimmers for your team, like regardless of where they end up, like if it's a fit, it's a fit. Like if, if, if they yeah. want to be there and you want them to be there, then hopefully you can make it work. And and sometimes it's out yeah. of your control. Um, but I would say, yeah, that's a great outlook. Um, certainly yeah. something. That I was going to say that's, the, I think the hardest part when you work at um, good schools, I, I think any, any school really like there's, mm -hmm. it's very rare that you're not, that you're going to have less people interested than you have spots to offer right like it's it's very rare right. when you work at a, at a high level school whether that's high level athletics high level academics or the combination of both um that that you're that you're gonna like that everyone who wants to be end up here ends up here and so i think um you know as you go through that like trying to help them find other opportunities that might be good fits and um, you know, like I, I am always recommending my friends. I'm like, Oh, if you're looking at this school, have you looked at this school? Like, have you talked to this coach? Mm -hmm. You know, and then I'm calling people being like, I talked to this kid. I think they'd be a great fit for you. You know, they said this thing that made me think of you. Um, because mm -hmm. I, I, I just, there's so many amazing schools and so many amazing coaches. And I think sometimes like I grew up in New Hampshire, I grew up in New Hampshire. I did not know that the NESCAC was a thing. I didn't even, I didn't know. And <laughs> Like that, that is, that is, you know, it's also pre-internet, but that's crazy. Like it's, it's crazy yeah. to think that I didn't know growing up, you know, 45 minutes from the Tufts campus and two hours from Bates and Bowdoin. And, you know, I just didn't know that it existed. Right. Um, and, and so now I'm always like trying to, trying to recommend places and obviously it worked out great for me and I love my experience at Kenyon, but, um, you know, the first meet I went to and I saw Williams, I was like, oh, huh, that looks like a place that I could have been successful, you know, like, and I, yeah. I didn't, I didn't look there. Um, so yeah, I feel like that's also part of our job is to like help the kids find places, even if it's not your place. Right. Yeah, for sure. And it is interesting. I feel like I can um, hear it a little bit. Not that there's any regrets about going to Kenyon or anything, but it's like it, with, with uh, now being in the, the coaching world and seeing the plethora of amazing places and amazing coaches that, you know, that are, that are out there. It, like I get it sometimes where I'm like, I just, I just wish I would have known in retrospect, like all of these options that were out there. Um, not that it would have changed my decision or not that anything would be different, but um, yeah, you only know as much as you know. I don't know. It's like, it's like you, you, um, yeah, without that exposure or even knowing that these, other amazing schools, other in division one, division two, II, division three, wherever, like are out there. Um, yeah. It just, it just can help broaden your, I don't know, just, just like spectrum of, of places a little yeah. bit, but yeah, that's a, that's no, that's a great point. Um, and uh, so, so moving away from sort of those initial assistant coaching roles at both Hamilton and Columbia, um, what, what intrigued you about the head coaching role at Mary Washington and, 
Um, moreover, what was the transition like from being an assistant, you know, six years at Columbia and at Hamilton and now, you know, coming to Mary Washington and being at the helm? Yeah. Um, Mary Washington like had a couple of things that were intriguing. Um, so division three, like th that at the time I was like, I want to be a division three head coach. So check that box East coast. Um, I, I want to stay near my family. So check that box. Um, you know, I, Matt Kinney, who is there two coaches before me, um, was a Kenyan grad. And so I kind of like knew of Mary Washington, um, when, when we had traveled to NCAAs, when I was swimming, we would see him as a Kenyan alum with his team. So I kind of like knew it existed. Um, and to be very honest, and this is probably like not the best thing to say, but like I needed a job because I had left my position at Columbia, um, and didn't have a job. So it ended up being mm -hmm. like a very, uh, fortuitous timing. And I got really lucky. Like sometimes I just, I, I think I made like kind of an impulsive decision to leave Columbia. Um, and I was just like, I don't, I, I, I think like six years in, in the city, I just was like, I need to get back to my roots and I need to, you know, Kenyon, Kenyon is a very small school in the middle of um, Ohio. And I, I kind of went to New York city and, and did that experience. Um, so yeah, so I, 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 uh, like sometimes I'm like, what an idiot, like who, who would do that? But that was me, um, at, you know, <laughs> the ripe old age of 30, um, just making bold moves. Um, but it worked out and it was great. Um, I was, I was very lucky. It was a, it was a small athletic department. Um, and so I got to know the other coaches really well. Um, it was, um, like a, the, the way that the setup was there is like all the coaches were on one hallway. So I, my office wasn't on the pool deck. Um, you know, so I got to know the other coaches really well, which was hugely, hugely helpful to me as a young coach. Um, when I had questions, I could just pop next door and see, you know, Dana Hall, who was our lacrosse and field hockey coach. Um, and like, I, I made some great friends there. Um, so yeah, I feel like that transition, like I, I, oh my gosh, my first year as a head coach, like, I think I was in the office every day from 5.00 AM until 10 PM. And like, I would walk home, fall asleep and come back and do it again. Um, you know, it was a team of 70 kids, men and women. And, um, we had a six lane pool. So we were running double practices every practice. So, you know, like three hours in the morning, four hours at night of on deck time. And, um, I didn't have an assistant that was full time that year. Um, I ended up getting Justin Anderson, who's the current head coach at Mary Washington. Now, um, he had graduated the year before and he was hiking the Appalachian trail. And like, once he got done with that, I was like, please come help. But he was like living in Northern Virginia and, um, driving down. Like it was just like pure chaos, wow. but the best kind of <laughs> chaos, you know, and I had incredible kids and I had, again, again, like, I just, I feel so fortunate. Like I, I loved it. And like, I, I just, I like poured everything I had into it and, and it was awesome. Um, but man, you learn a lot in your first year as a head coach, like just all these things. Like I remember, like, I remember when I was at Columbia, I would get really frustrated sometimes um, because I would be like, Di is not present during practice. Like she's on her phone or she's like doing something else. And I just didn't get it because right. Being with the kids is the best part of the day. And I was like, what is she doing? And then I got it to be a head coach and I was like, oh, I get it. There's like always 800 things in your brain that you're worried about. You're not just able to be super present because you checked off the three things. Um, you know, there's always someone emailing you, you have a meeting, you have this, you have that. Um, so yeah, that, that was like hugely eye opening. I was just like, my brain doesn't stop working. Like it just keeps going and going and going. Mm. Um, and there's always something else that you can be, you know, and like you're in charge, like you, you're in charge and you're solely responsible for these kids. And you feel like it's all on you to like give them everything and give them the best experience and allow them to reach their full potential and make sure all this stuff. And yeah, man, I went over budget and I <laughs> did all these things that I just like, I didn't know. And I was like, Oh, sorry. And luckily my AD was like very kind to me and, you know, understanding and, and patient, which was, which was great. And um, yeah, I stayed for eight years and it was, it was awesome. Like I had some of the best people come through my program and um, yeah, like our, our field hockey coach who was hired a couple of years after me is to, to this day, like one of my great friends and yeah, it was a great, it was a great time. It was like, it was just like such an experience. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, it sounds like it for sure. Yeah. Just being, yeah, again, like thrust into a head coaching position and um, yeah, just not knowing like, you know, everything that, that you have to, that you have to assume. And, and certainly I agree. Like I was just, as you were talking about that um, experience at Columbia, where you're kind of getting like frustrated, you're like, Oh, why isn't, you know, uh, coach present fully present <laughs> on the deck. Like I, I was now thinking like times as a, as a naive, you know, young GA where I probably felt the same thing about, 
my head coach, Peter Solomon internally, like just being like, you know, well, why, why, why isn't he fully focused on this or that? But it's like, yeah, I mean, thinking back, like he always had stuff on his plate and always had stuff on his yeah. mind. Um, and yeah, I mean, it's a lot. So I guess a question that comes to mind is like, how do you balance at all? And then maybe there isn't a, you know, it's impossible to fully balance like all of that, right? Like it's, it's kind of inevitable, the, the chaos of it all, but like, how do you just, what tools do you use to like, I don't know, just try and make uh, it a little bit easier. <laughs> yeah. So I think, I think there's a couple of things like the, the longer I've been in it, the more I've kind of been able to separate myself from like, like Abby as a person and Abby as a swim coach. Um, like when I was younger, that was the only thing. And it was the only thing I had. Um, mm. and I, I try and remember that I'm a person outside of my job. Um, I have a dog and that really helps because like, you know, I have to go home. I have to take her out for walks. I have to give myself that space. Um, and I think like I have gotten really good, um, especially in this year, I've been really proud of myself because I haven't just gone all in and I'm not in the office all day, um, you know, and I'll, I'll be pretty intentional about taking time in the middle of the day and I'll go home and I'll take my dog out and I'll get lunch and I'll kind of take a couple hours where I'm not thinking. I mean, there's always stuff in your head, but where I'm not just like all in on Princeton women swimming and diving. Um, and I work at, at weird hours. It's just me in the house. So um, you know, I don't have to worry about going home and, and taking care of kids or a partner. Um, so I can, you know, if I, if I go home and I write a workout from seven 30 to nine, no one's getting mad at me, but it also means that like I've chosen that so I could take time off in the middle of the day. Um, I try and utilize uh, my assistants as much as I can. Um, and I try and do what I did for me and, and help them learn and give them opportunities. So they both write workouts. Um, and they're both, they're both involved in that and, and recruiting and planning and, travel, like I, I, you know, that that's hugely helpful too, is just having people mm -hmm. that can support you. Um, you know, so like today I was like, they, they went, the girls had a spin class and I was like, guys, I've, I've got stuff to do. Can you guys go up and cover that for me? So I don't have to be there, you know? And, and they're like, yeah, sure. No problem. And then, um, you know, they both headed out right before we got on this. So I'm trying, trying to give them that opportunity to like figure it out as well. But um, yeah, I think, yeah. I think in any profession, especially, especially one like coaching, um, the hours get a little bit crazy and you have weekends and you have all that stuff. And so you have to be okay with like, there's always, there's always something to be done and, um, it's okay if it doesn't get done. You know, mm -hmm. I always say like happy, healthy kids is, is the main goal. And, um, as long as you're achieving that, you know, the, the other stuff, it, it, it matters, but, but it's not worth giving up your, your soul for it. So, um, I try mm -hmm. to remind myself of that. And I think, I don't know. I just, the, the older I've gotten, the more I've just been like happy, healthy kids, happy, healthy kids. Um, yeah. and, and most of the time, if they're happy and healthy, they're going to, they're going to be swimming well and diving well. And, um, yeah, I don't know. I, yeah. I, yeah. I don't know if I've, if I've got it figured out, but I've definitely got it more figured out than when I started at Mary Washington. Oh, for sure. No, I mean, yeah, you, you through like a lot of it, you just, you, you can't have it all figured out. Um, when you're maybe younger in the coaching game, like you just have to have that time, um, those hours put in and, 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 and yeah, I mean it, it but it, I like that, like happy, healthy kids. Um, I think that's a great thing to just kind of keep in the back of your mind as you're going through, you know, uh, the, the coaching days. So very cool. Um, well, you spent eight years at Mary Washington. So looking back on those eight years, like what are some maybe favorite memories? It could be like surprise oh swims or, um, I know I, when I ask this question, <laughs> coaches will be like, well, I don't want to leave anyone out. I'm like, Oh, I get it. I get it. But I yeah. like the stories. I like the favorite memories. Yeah. I like the surprise swims and anything that just like yeah. really was like a big moment. Yeah. I mean, I think like, I, I think some of the things that, that were so fun for me at Mary Washington were like getting to be in charge and getting to make my own mistakes and getting to, to form like really, really great relationships. Like I still keep in touch with so many of those kids and have been to their weddings and, you know, get their Christmas cards with their babies on them. And, um, you know, it's that, that piece for me, like is, is huge. Um, but I think like some of the cool stuff at Mary Washington, like we had a little six lane pool in, like one year for Christmas, uh, not Christmas, um, Halloween, one year for Halloween, one of the girls was like, can we fill it with glow sticks? And I was like, sure why not and so we like turned all the lights off in the pool and we broke like 300 glow sticks and like threw them in the pool and so we swam in the dark with glow sticks you know and like that was so fun like we did um one year we did like gingerbread building houses like houses like built gingerbread houses so it was like the classes and the kids got so into it and they built them on deck and like they just took over this whole portion of the deck and they built like they they lived off campus and so they were building their off-campus houses and they were putting pools in and having the gummy bears swim in them and so i feel like those things like 
when I think of like the things that make like that place special, it was like those experiences with the kids. Um, mm. And then, you know, we, we were very fortunate to be successful in our conference. And um, so I had like a lot of conference champions and kids that did stuff that I don't think they expected. Certainly things that I didn't expect going in. Um, like we had like a three year streak where we won the 200 backstroke on the women's side, but it was always like, like you think you like, oh yeah, that girl's definitely going to win the 200 backstroke. And then like someone random would just come in and have this swim of their life and like be a conference champion. And that was really cool. Mm. Um, yeah, I had Alex Anderson, um, who was an, an incredibly, probably one of the best swimmers I've, I've coached, um, if, if not the best, um, like an incredibly cool kid, incredibly cool story. And like, I don't know, I was telling my assistant about him the other day because he's just like such a, such a unique story, but, um, you know, he, he won a national, he won a couple, but like his first national title, like was, was awesome. Like I, I was cheering and I was like going crazy and my bracelets fell off in the pool and like, I might've peed my pants a little bit. Like it was, it was awesome. Cause it was just like, his story was super interesting. And, um, yeah, that was, that was really special. And I think one of the things we talked a lot about and, and, and I continue to talk a lot about on all my teams is like at one person's success is everyone's success because we can't do it without everyone on the team. Um, and one of the coolest things was like, he, he won a national title and I probably got like, I don't know, 25 texts from kids on my team being like, I won a national title. Like I contributed to that. Um, oh, and that so made cool. me feel like they, they got it, you know, like it wasn't like, holy crap, Alex is so good. It was like, we helped make Alex great. Um, and they were taking as much pride in that as they, they did in their own swims. And I think, um, yeah, I feel like it's like those moments that are great, but like, I, I feel like for me, when I look back at the the things that have meant the most to me in coaching, it's it's the it's not the swimming pieces of it, it's not the diving pieces of it. It's like you know, I I was in one of my former swimmers' weddings, like that. What an honor, you know, to like stand beside her while she got married. Like I've been to so many weddings, I've gotten to see these people as they grow up and and still have that relationship. And um, when you have swimmers that that become coaches. Um, sorry. Um, when you have swimmers that become mm -hmm. coaches and you get to work with them, like on, on as peers, you know, like that, that's really cool. Like Hannah Hagee was an incredible swimmer for me at Mary Washington, probably like one of the best relay swimmers that I've ever coached. Um, she would just, she was so invested in her teammates. Like it was like, I will, I will like give everything I have on this relay mm -hmm. because it affects three other people. Um, and then she became a coach and I know that she approaches coaching in that same way and just is willing to like give everything she has to her kids to have a great experience. And like, that's awesome. Like I got to share the pool deck with her. She worked for me for a, a year and a half and then got into coaching. And now, you know, she's a head coach at Trinity and like crushing it. And it's, I don't know, those are the things that like the swims are awesome. And, and I certainly have many memories of those, but it's also like the, the stupid stuff, you know, like hanging out in the office and like at Mary Washington, the kids will come over my house and like take my dog for a walk. Cause I live right near campus or like bake cookies. Cause I had a kitchen and um, you know, this break I've had, I think four, six different girls at my house, like using the kitchen, hanging out. Cause they wanted to see like the Christmas lights before the holidays during exams. And they were stressed, like taking the dogs for a walk. So mm -hmm. I don't know. I feel like that yeah. stuff, that stuff matters a heck of a lot more to me and probably to everyone, but I don't know. Yeah, but no, but it's important to shed light on it too, because like you said, I mean, it's, uh, it, I think part of the just the human connection of of um, of coaching and and mentoring like young athletes, like yeah, you're in it for, you know, to see them succeed and and in turn to have some success yourself and 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 you know, kind of reflect on the work that you've put in and the investment, but at the same time, like you just want them to be, you know, happy, healthy, um, and and certainly just overall in good spirits and, and then see them down the line. Right. Like you said, like, that's so yeah. cool. Like five years removed, you run into them and it's like, Hey, how are you yeah. doing? And it's like, I just want you yeah. to know that was the best four years of my life, you know, whatever it is. Um, yeah. To see them doing it's well. It's also just so like, they're having babies. Like, you know, I've got yeah. like kids that are like, they have full on families. Like I have two kids from Mary Washington and they started dating when they were on the team and they got married and now they have their wow. first son. And it's like, it's like incredible. And I'm friends with like their parents and their siblings. And, you know, I, like I just, that piece is, I just, again, I feel so lucky. Like every holiday card I got this year was someone that swimming had brought into my life somehow. So it was like mm -hmm. former teammates of mine or kids that I coached or people that I coach with. Like that's, that's real cool. Yeah. 
Super special. Yeah, for sure. Um, well, okay. So eight years at Mary Washington, and then you make the move to Tufts um, to get back in the NESCAC and not to necessarily assume a head coaching role, but certainly be a big part of the coaching staff at Tufts. So talk to me about that, you know, that moment of just leaving Mary Washington, heading to Tufts, and then ultimately the time you spent there and, and certainly, you know, witnessing the growth of of now like a national contender, an SCAC, certainly an SCAC, um, you know, uh, title contender year in and year out. And, and yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah, that was another move that like, I, I was very ha happy at Mary Washington, but I felt like I had done as much for the program as I could. And, and that someone with new energy and, um, you know, less frustration might be able to take it to the next level and, and help, um, you know, help, help make that team even better. Um, and Justin certainly has done that and then some, um, so I feel like that worked out really well. Um, like I said, I grew up in New Hampshire, so Tufts is about 45 minutes from my folks house and they're still there and, um, being close to home was important to me. And, you know, I love the NASCAC, um, like the, the, I, I, I love it. Like the people there are great. And I was super lucky to know a lot of them and, um, I knew Adam, but I wasn't super close with him. And um, so when when Nancy was leaving and they kept it as an associate head coach position, so, you know, I had um, some some funding behind it because, you know, I'm not 22 anymore and I can't live on, on what I used to live on. Um, I was super excited and I talked to him and um, yeah, luckily like the interview process worked out there and um, yeah, it was it was an interesting time. I, I came in right after the men had won their first NESCAC title. Um, and my first year there, we were second on both sides. Um, but that was huge. Uh, that was a huge jump for the women. Um, they, they had think had been fourth the year before and eighth two years before that. And, um, yeah, like just some incredible swimmers and, you know, we like won a couple Ivy league titles, uh, Amy Socha, whose sister actually coaches is the head coach at Dartmouth. Um, and yeah, so she, she won an Ivy league title. Um, and that was super exciting. You know, it hadn't happened for a couple of years and, um, the energy, the energy again at Tufts was just super high. And I think, um, you know, I, I, again, like, I just feel super lucky that I got to be there at such a pivotal time. Uh, the next year was, you know, 2019, 2020. And we went and, um, again, like had a great showing at NESCAX and like really felt like we were setting ourselves up for a great NCAAs. Um, we finished with a relay win, which, you know, hadn't happened. Like beating Williams in a relay on the women's side was, was huge, was a huge, huge deal. Mm. Um, and yeah. And then, you know, COVID happened and, and we, we didn't move on, but, um, the kids handled it super well. And, um, you know, it, it was, it was such a privilege to be able to like help kids through that time. Um, you know, there, there, everyone was having emotions and doing stuff, but I think for me, it just felt again, like there was more to coaching than just like the fast times. It was like this really, you know, the seniors, the seniors lost their, their senior spring. And at that point we didn't know how long it was going to go on and what it was going to look like. And, um, certainly had some swimmers that had been set up for some really big swims that didn't get to experience that. Um, but I feel like, again, just getting to be with them, you know, virtually during that time and, um, kind of, kind of help with that was, was really good. And, um, then I stayed for one more year and it was the year that, um, we had school, but we didn't have a season. So, you know, training in a six lane pool when you can only have 12 people and, and you have, you know, 70 kids on your team and you're trying to get them all in and out and doing the scheduling, um, that year was hard. That year was really, yeah. really hard. Um, the things that I like best about coaching, I, I didn't get to do, you know, I didn't get to spend time with the kids in person. They weren't hanging out in the office. Um, I didn't see Adam and Joe, um, nearly as much because we weren't allowed to see each other, you know? So we'd mm -hmm. like see each other in passing, but, but the things that make coaching what I enjoy, um, didn't really exist that year. And so I think on a very personal level, like I struggled a lot with that and I, um, just, I really was unhappy with, with everything as I think many people were, but I think what was really hard that year is you were looking at some schools and they had seasons. And so you were like, okay, so some schools are doing this and then some schools just didn't have school. And we kind of, I felt like we're in that like super gray area where it was like the kids were on school, but they weren't having the experience that they wanted. And, and, and kind of the way I described that year is like, normally, you know, if your cup is empty, you can go to 10 people and everyone can give you a little bit and your cup is full. Um, and no one has really like depleted their store. And I felt like that year, everyone's cup was like this high. So no one could fill you back up. Um, and I certainly wasn't filling the kids cups at all. Like I was just, I, I was just like trying to make it through and, and give them an experience, you know, we're like trying to host like a senior meet and like, we couldn't have everyone in the pool deck because our pool deck was too small. And there was all these rules. And, um, you know, obviously like if those were the biggest challenges we had, they, 
we were very lucky, um, but it still was hard. And, um, you know, it doesn't, I don't think like different, different levels of a hard are still hard. Um, and so when Matt called, uh, about the Princeton job, he was like, you know, do you know of anyone in division three? I think division three coaches are great. And I was kind of like, nah, here's some names. And, and I was like, haha, what about me? And then, you know, here we are. But, mm. um, I certainly like, the next, my first year at Princeton, like when, when division three went back to having a season, like I, I went, Matt was like super nice. And he let me go to NCAA as I got to see the women win the 800 freestyle relay, which is something we thought we had a chance at the year before. And, um, yeah, like, you know, I, again, super special. Like I got to sit in the stands with all their parents and, and witness that. And, um, you know, that was the year that Adam got coach of the year and I got to see that. And it just, you know, like those things are really cool. Like they're just, yeah. those, those are kind of the moments that you like look at. And I think, um, you know, I, I feel like for everyone that lost that last year, you know, whether it was like just their, their senior spring or their whole next year, um, I think in all the teams, they probably had incredible impacts. And I hope that all those athletes are able to look back and be able to say like, you know, I might've missed it, but I set my team up for the success that they had later and um, hopefully take a lot of pride in that. So yeah, mm -hmm. it was pretty cool. It was pretty cool to be in the stands. It was pretty cool to see that happen and like to be with the parents that were like, you know, just so proud of their kids. And yeah, that was, that was really cool. And I like, I, I just like, it was literally the week before men's NCAAs and Matt let me go to that meet because he knew it was important to me. Um, and then I flew from there to men's NCAAs to watch, to watch our guys swim. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's so, that's really special and, and very um, just cool, Matt, to, to allow the space for you to, to go and, and visit that team that ended up, you know, swimming at NCAAs. Um, Cause yeah, I mean, it, like I think about it a lot, like I, I only spent two years at Wesleyan and yeah, they're super recent, but like if you, if you pour a lot of yourself or all of yourself into that job, which a lot of coaches do, not all, but a lot of coaches do like you have emotional attachment. Like there it's, it's, it's undeniable. Like I still look at, you know, the results. So I'm looking at the results all the time of the Wesleyan swimmers and missing being on the pool deck with them and, you know, I'm very early on in this, in this coaching journey, but at the same time, like I just know myself and the way that I, you know, kind of, uh, I don't know, just am as a coach, like that emotional attachment will be there for sure. Uh, yeah. And so, yeah. And I'm happy you touched on the COVID, um, just the COVID time and, and that meaning a lot to you in the sense where you recognize how hard it is for those swimmers to not, you know, finish out those, you know, that, that senior spring or even for the juniors or whoever was involved, you know, um, that was in the college kind of cycle through, through that year. Like it was really hard. And certainly I was in that boat too. And it was just, you know, it, it was, it was hard. And so um, I think that's a mark of someone who is, is just a good coach, a good person is like being there for their athletes um, during that process. Cause yeah, it was definitely very difficult. Um, so happy you touched on that for sure. Um, well, you know, I guess moving on from Tufts. Yeah. So now, you know, you, you, been at Princeton since 2021. Um, and, and I guess, you know, what is kind of your vision for, you know, this, this women's team moving forward? Um, like you guys have had tremendous success. You, it's always kind of been synonymous. I feel like with Princeton swimming and diving is definitely a level of a real good level of success. Um, so I guess that comes with it for the most part, but like, yeah. Um, what, what sort of your vision and, and maybe even looking at this year, right? Like looking ahead um, to Ivies and to uh, NCAAs, hopefully getting some qualifiers there, maybe even the Olympic trials and stuff like that. Like, I don't know. What do you, what do you have um, just, just in mind? Yeah. I mean, I think, I, I think first and foremost, right. Is, is the women um, won Ivies last year and, um, you know, that's always a goal is, is, um, you know, as, as Jim Seam would say, like be your best against the best, the very best time. Um, and so to set them up to be successful at, at our Ivy league meet and our ECAC meet, we, we, we can't bring all of our swimmers to Ivy's. And so we have another meet the next weekend, um, kind of like the bigger conference umbrella, um, ECACs. And so I want to, I want to, you know, hopefully get them to a place where they're having swims that they're proud of and enjoying their time with their team. And, um, you know, walking away from those two weekends, feeling really good about what they were able to do. Um, we have two girls right now in the corner I am that are ranked ninth and 11th in the country. So I feel really confident that they'll make NCAAs. Um, they're both first years. And so I'd love to get, you know, some of our upperclassmen there. Um, and I think we have a really good shot to do it. You know, um, that meet is really hard to make, but I feel like we're setting ourselves up well. And, um, you know, that that's, 
that's also been a goal is like to get more than one person last year. We had one representative at the meet. Um, we have a diver that is, is very talented and I think she has a really good shot at making it too. So I think, you know, I, I kind of take things one step at a time. Um, and so that's kind of, you know, like the, the next step for us is, is our Columbia dual meet and, and our Virginia Tech and Penn State dual meet. Um, so, so yeah, I feel like it's just like, you know, improving every time we race and, and really coming into our own. Um, we have three girls with trials cuts right now. Um, we have an international, we have an international contingent that are going to be competing for spots for their home countries. Um, so we have, um, a girl from Zimbabwe, a couple of South Africans, Canadian, um, English. So yeah, so we, we have like a lot going on in the next six months. Um, and it's probably less than six months now, but, um, yeah, I, again, like I, I think the long-term goal is to continue to, you know, be the dominant team in the Ivy league and, um, you know, I don't know that that always means winning. Um, I think having a, a really good depth presence and um, competing at a really high level and, and moving people on to the next level, like all of those things are, are things that we want to do. Um, yeah, so I, I think those are kind of the goals. And I think like long term, you know, like, I don't know if, if you asked me when I was at Mary Washington, like if you asked me when I started at Columbia, if I was going to be at Columbia for six years, I would have been like, no, there's no way, like three year job. Mm -hmm. um, if if you asked me when I was at Mary Washington, if I was going to leave Mary Washington, I probably would have said no. When I went to Tufts, I thought that that was my last job because it was close to my family and I love the NASDAQ and I, I love things. So I, I feel like it's really hard to, to get too far ahead. Obviously, like I have, I have big goals for the program and I, I anticipate being here for a really long time. But um, I, I just kind of want to enjoy the moment and I want to be present with the kids and, um, you know, like get get to know them better and just give them an experience that hopefully they can look back on the way I look at my time at Kenyon and, um, you know, the relationships that I formed there with, with my coaches and my teammates. And just, I, I, I kind of want to do my best to create that experience for them at Princeton. And, um, that doesn't mean like I, people are always like, Oh, do you try and make places like Kenyon? And I don't, you can't like Kenyon is Kenyon and Princeton is Princeton, and, you know, Tufts is Tufts and, um, mm -hmm. that's what makes it great. So taking the things I've learned along the way and putting them into practice here and just seeing, what it is that we can do. Um, and again, like ultimately just, just setting them up for, for success in their lives, you know, like swimming is incredibly important. Diving is incredibly important. These kids spend, you know, so much time and energy doing it. But at the end of the day, like there's, there's so much more to, to life. And, um, I, I just want this to be like a great part of their Princeton experience and their life experience, but not the only thing that they have to, to keep them, you know, happy and going. Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, it's great. Um, I love it. Uh, I, I had another question. Um, I kind of last few, we'll wrap it up here, but, um, I guess what, what advice would you give to, uh, just coaches that are looking to make their way in collegiate coaching and maybe are young in their journeys and are figuring it out and, you know, kind of looking at other coaches trajectories and like, Oh, they went here to here to here to here. Like, I feel like I find myself doing that. Um, and it, it's, it's hard to, stay present sometimes or kind of caught up and what's the next best move for me to get me to that next job or whatever it is. So yeah. What advice would you give? Um, I think the first one would be like, find your people. Um, you need people in this job. Like you need, you need good people and you need a support network and um, yeah, find, find your people. And like a lot of that is just like, you, you might be like, you know, I asked numerous people when I was starting out and I was young, like, I would ask questions of coaches all the time, but like, you know, it took a while for me to find like my network and my group and the people that like now are, are my ride or dies. Um, and it's okay if you don't find them right away, but like relationships are, are hugely helpful. And I think, you know, in terms of like a trajectory or coaching path, like obviously mine is not what people would think of as like normal, you know, like I left a head coaching position to be an associate head coach and I left that position to be an assistant coach and, um, you know, now I'm a head coach again. And, um, I, I think like, just because it works for someone else doesn't mean that it's right for you. And there's so many factors that go into it. Um, and you need to take those into consideration. I think it's really easy to get swayed the same way as in the recruiting process, right. As a student athlete, like, oh, I want to be this coach at this level. And that's the only way I'm going to be successful. And that's great. And if you make it to the, whatever that is, that's fine. Um, and it's not to demean, you know, like if you're the, if you're Todd DeSorbo and you're coaching the best team in the country right now and you're an Olympic coach like that's amazing and that's great but that doesn't mean it's the right path for everyone and you can be super successful and make a huge impact at so many different levels 
Um, and I think that's just really important. I feel like people forget that sometimes. Um, but man, like when I think back about my time at Kenyon, like, and the impact my coaches had on me, it was, it was incredible. And, and some of the biggest impact were my assistant coaches, um, you know, and, and the role they had. And, and like I said, Amy Heasley Williams probably had like the biggest impact on me becoming a coach. And I don't talk to her. It's not like I have this great relationship with her that I had this great relationship. Like she just did all these things that made me understand like the role that a coach could play. Um, and so I think sometimes like as a coach, just like you probably don't even know the kids that you're affecting the most. Um, but yeah, there's, there's, I, I think that for me, like, obviously <laughs> this is like the, the thread that goes through everything is like the, the people that you have um, become very important. And I, you know, I always say like, I'm always a resource if there's like younger coaches that have a question or just want to chat, like, um, you know, the more good people we can keep in this profession, the better off we're going to be as a sport. So um, I think that piece is, is hugely important. Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, I appreciate it. Appreciate, uh, yeah, just the insight. I think as I grow through this podcasting uh, journey, I, I find myself selfishly just taking in all of this and, and, and kind of thinking on it. And uh, yeah, I guess it's a way for me to be you know, reaching out to cold calling coaches, right? Like in a way it's, it's, yeah, it's a podcast format. It's a, uh, it's definitely more, um, you know, official and interview based, but at the same time, like selfishly as someone who wants to be a college coach in the future, I, I think about this all the time. So I deeply appreciate it. Um, I hope people, other, uh, p other people can learn from, um, from it too, or just take something from it. And, uh, and yeah, so last question here, um, are you a fan of get out swims? And if so, do you have any favorite memory of a get out swim it's funny um i i was like oh wow we haven't done a get out swim in a while like and they're so <laughs> fun and they're so fun for the team they are um i was like maybe we maybe we should throw one in this week um <laughs> but yeah i i think i think my favorite like type of get out swims are ones that include more than one person um you know i like it when it's like okay you you have the team and you got to throw five people up and they've got to go under x and whatever the event is you know like pick your five because it's like you know, I feel like a lot of times in a get out swim, it's like, oh, pick the fastest person, give them a hard time. Yeah, great. They did that, you know. Um, right. So I always like to show up and be like, man, yeah, we're going to go, you know, 100 IM and you got to get five people, you know, under a minute or whatever the case is and um, see who they pick and see who steps up. Because a lot of times it's like, you know, there's there's two people that are like, yeah, I'll do it. And then you got to find the other three that want to do it. And um, we did a couple when I was with the men's staff that were like that. And it was fun because like, you know, even if a kid didn't think he could make it, he's like, but I'll do it. Like, I'll do it and see what I can go. And like, sometimes they'd be the fifth person that made it. So, um, yeah, so I like stuff like that. And and I also was like, yeah, thanks for reminding me that we should probably do some more fun stuff. Um, I feel like I've been really focused on like just getting the work done the, the past couple of weeks. And I was like, yeah, so I, I actually was talking to Juan and Alex and I was like, guys, we got to do something fun. We got to throw something in just to, like spice it up a little bit. Um, so, yeah, thanks for reminding me that that's that's good for them, too. Yeah. Yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah. It's good to, uh, yeah, like you said, spice it up and, and give them a little external motivation with, uh, with the get out swim. So I think it's great. Um, well, cool. Well, Abby, again, thanks for your time. It was great getting to talk to you, learn more about your coaching journey. Um, and, and yeah, if there's anything else you'd like to add before we wrap up, now's the time to do so. Um, but otherwise it's been, no, fun. I just, I just think it's cool what you're doing. I, I love doing stuff like this. I just, um, yeah, I think it's, it's really cool to talk about and like, it just makes me like reflect on how lucky I am. And so now I'm in a better mood than I was, you know, two hours ago. So, so thanks for that. Um, and yeah, I think it's, I think it's awesome. And I like listening to the other coaches talk. Cause I feel like it's, you know, the same way you're learning, like it's great for me to be like, Oh yeah. Like that was, that was this, or like, Oh yeah. I remember one time, like GK said this to me and like, you know, I, there's, there's, so many great coaches out there that, um, you know, we can all learn from. So thanks for getting it more accessible for all of us. Yeah, no, for sure. That's, that's the whole point. Um, and, and yeah, thanks again. And, uh, and yeah.